Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it came to pass in the month Keslev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan the castle, that Kanani, one of my brethren, came out of Judah. He and certain men, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, that were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and I fasted and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, I beg you, O Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awful God, that keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open, that you mayest hearken unto the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you at this time, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, while I confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Yes, I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt corruptly against you, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances, which you didst command your servant Moses. Remember, I beg you, the word that you didst command your servant Moses, saying, If you deal treacherously, I will scatter you abroad among the peoples. But if you return unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though your dispersed were in the uttermost part of the heaven, Yet will I gather them from there, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to cause my name to dwell there. Now these are your servants, and your people, whom you hast redeemed by your great power, and by your strong hand. O Lord, I beg you, let now your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name, and prosper, I pray you, your servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was cupbearer to the king. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. We're going to be doing the book of Nehemiah, or Nehemiah. Nehemiah was in a period of, of Ezra. It was in the same period, the same time frame. The captivity, This there was a... Certain of the those of Judah, who will be referred to as the Jews here, they are coming out of the captivity where they have been for their period of 70 years. Now we're going to find the there was a still a portion of them who were in Persia, who was still in, scattered out. And there's going to be a second wave of this captivity coming out. And that's this period that that we're in. And this law of time that was between when uh, all the nations that were around about had brought up these uh, accusations against the Jews and the the house of God was going unbuilt. We're going to pick it up here in verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it was, now it came to pass in the month, Cheslev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan, the castle. And these would be the words of Nehemiah, and they are recorded here, and they would have not been recorded here if there wasn't a been purpose. So we're going to let the purpose reveal itself, and the words are something that is poured out, and it's something that comes from within, and we're going to find that out. Nehemiah are those that are comforted of God, and he is the son of Hakaliah, or this one who come forth from Hakaliah, and that is this one whom God has enlightened. And this time period here is going to be this time period. It comes to pass in the month, and that's that period of lesser light. A month is always a time measured by a lesser light uh, in, in this month. It's going to be Keslov, and that's going to be that, that month of confidence in the 20th year, in the 20th, and 20 is a a 20th is a portion of a greater, and the 20th year would be the redemption 
leaving that portion of redemption in the greater understanding. And this is going to be during that period that I was in Shushan, the castle. Shushan is the place of the lily. And that's that place that brings forth to that Kanani. One of my brethren came out of Judah, he and certain men. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, that were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. The Kanani. Kanani is my mercy. He's one of my brethren, came out of Judah, and that's that place of praisings, or uh, where the, we're talking about the nation of Judah. He and certain men, and I asked them concerning these Jews, or these ones of Judah, Jews here means those of Judah, that had escaped, that were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And these were the ones that was already there. They would, had already been taken there or been sent back, we can say they had been released, and they had been there in the city, but we'll find the people of the nations had stopped the building of the city, and even Jerusalem, that's that place of the peaceful teachings, three, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And the remnant that's left there in the captivity, we will find out. Those that were remaining there the, in the province, that's that, that would be that district. And even that, that district of the judgment that, was, that God we can witness there, see, that's, that's what God did. There was a great affliction and reproach. And the walls of Jerusalem, that, those teachings of peace and that place of peaceful teachings also is broken down. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. And these gates, they even these places of judgment to where they used to sit and wait and come to this place for judgment thereof are burned with fire. And these places are burned with fire. And we're going to find out it's, that fire always represents judgment. Four. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days. And I fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now, when Nehemiah hears these things, he, he weeps and he cries because we'll find out this was a, a period where God was supposed to be blessing, supposed to be bringing them back out of their captivity. But there was a period of mourning here and stuff and a, a period of, of darkness because all the nations had come against them. We're going to find out this. It's during the reign of Artaxerxes when they sent to get the letters to stop all of it. Five, and said, I beg you, O Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awful God, that keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. And as the, as Nehemiah prays before God, we'll find out these certain days, and even for these understandings that, that God was supposed to be bringing his people back out of the captivity. He fasted. That would it'd be to deny himself the substance for the flesh. But now we will notice that it, it is to, to try to get the substance for the spirit. And he begins to pray, O Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awful God that keeps his covenant mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. And, and God does love and, keep, and watch over those that do keep his commandments. We find this is, this is the overall understanding that of it all. Six, let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open that you may have hearkened unto the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you at this time, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, while I confess the sin of, chi while I confess the sin of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Yes, I and my father's house have sinned. Let your ear now be attentive. Listen, Lord, and your eyes open. These, your perceptions that you can see and we'll find out so that the Lord will perceive and purpose these things and, and we'll find out that God does that you may hearken listen unto the prayer of your servant these things that we ask for 
which I pray before you at this time. And it's during this period, that's what time is, during this period, day and night for the children of Israel, your servants. And we're going to find out this period is day and night through light and darkness for the children of Israel. That's all those that come from the one, those that contend with the mighty one who do serve the Lord. See, God said, you are my servants, and they are, while I confess the sins of the children of Israel, because they do go astray, those that contend with the mighty one, and have sinned against you. Yes, I and my father's house have sinned against you. Seven, we have dealt very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you did command your servant Moses. And we'll find out during this period of time they had not kept the commandments and the statutes nor the ordinances which God did command by his servant Moses. Moses is the one uh, who God gave the law by. Moses is the one who brought the law down from the mountain. And these ordinances and these statutes that God dealt out. Eight. Remember, I beg you the word that you discommand your servant Moses, saying, If you deal treacherously, I will scatter you abroad among the peoples. Remember, remember those that are remembered of God. You see, they're remembering God. They're beginning to call on the Lord's name, calling to remembrance God's covenant, His mercy that He made. See, I beg you, remember, that word that you did command your servant Moses. This word, it's not a command. It's a promise. See, it's a promise saying, if you deal treacherously, I will scatter you abroad among the peoples. And we'll find out this is the great example God continues to make in all the earth, even today, even today, after the millenniums of time, because they sin. They go away from God's understanding. They go away from God's knowledge. They go away from God's wisdom. That he give you even in the beginning. See, the law is a little portion of God's knowledge, God's wisdom. Nine, but if you return unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though your dispersed were in the uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather you from there and bring them unto the place that I have chosen to cause my name to dwell there. But, could be a good word, could be a bad word, see, but, we, if, there's that qualifier, you return unto me. If you will return unto me, saith the Lord, and keep my commandments, and do them, though you're dispersed, were in the uttermost parts of heaven, though you were scattered out into every understanding known to man, every teaching, every philosophy, anything that... They got to imagine, yet will I gather you from there, and I will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to cause my name to dwell there. Bring you back to that place where he has caused his name to dwell. That name, that a name is something that when somebody tells us the name, we bring to mind that individual. In our mind comes this understanding or this reflection of this person. And that's the same way with God's name. And this is where God calls you to remember where he was, see, and where he dwells. Ten. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Now these are your servants, your people, Lord whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand, by your power, by your strength, by your works. See, your people, they were saved by you. And they are God's, those who, who will keep and do the commandments of God, the ordinances. It's always the qualifier. O oh Lord, I beg you, let now your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name, and prosper, I pray you, your servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was cupbearer to the king, and I beg you, see, I beg, I beseech, I plead to you, 
Let now your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. Be attentive. Pay attention to my prayer, this thing that I'm asking for, because what we'll find out, if it be God's will, this things, these things are done. And to the prayer of your servants, all those that pray before you, to delight and fear your name, those that delight and fear your name, will find those are the ones who keep the commandments of God, who serve God, who 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 do it willingly and with knowledge, knowing it's for your own good. Prosper your servant this day, even in this understanding, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. And now we're going to find out, see, Nehemiah, this one who is comforted of God, he is the cupbearer to the king. And this cup bearer, this cup bearer is to the one who gives him to drink or gives him water or causes him to drink. We'll find out to the, the word is shaka, and it's the one who brings the drink to the king. And a drink is something uh, a little different, uh, special because we'll find out in, in the cup is either one of two things it's that which is pleasing or that which is will make drunken. It's always is. Uh, we're going to move to chapter 2. Yeah. Turn and return. <laughs>